Okay, so for this demonstration, we're going to need a couple of things. Uh, you're going to need a can, just like a regular soda can, and about 100 milliliters of water. If you can't measure out exactly 100 milliliters of water, that's fine. Just make sure you put a little bit of water in the can, um, maybe an inch of water or so. We just need enough water in there that once we start boiling it, it's not all going to evaporate and leave the bottom of the can dry. Uh, we're also going to need some cold water. So I have some ice water over here. The colder the water, the better, and I'll explain why in just a minute. Um, but first, let's talk about what's going in, on inside of this can once we heat up that water. So we're going to put it on the stove, and you can see this one's already heated up. Um, we have a little bit of water vapor coming out of it. Let's talk about what, what's going on inside of here. So, so we're heating this can up, and the can is transferring energy to all of this water. And this water, the molecules inside the water start shaking, and they shake so fast that they end up breaking apart. And so the water molecules that are next to other water molecules suddenly uh, pull apart from them, and then we have what's called water vapor. So the water vapor starts rising out of the can, and um, as we get it to boil, it rises out really, really fast. And that's what we want. We want this water to be boiling before we do this demonstration. So initially, when this can isn't heated up, we have just water sitting in there, and then we have a bunch of regular atmospheric air. As it heats up, it pushes that atmospheric air out, and then we have mostly water vapor on the inside of this can. Now, the atmosphere where I'm at, um, I'm close to Denver, Colorado, so the atmosphere where I'm at is about 12 PSI. There's actually pressure pushing down on you right now, but you're born in that pressure and you live in that pressure, and so we're used to that kind of pressure on us. Um, as you get higher and higher in the atmosphere, the pressure goes down until eventually you're out in space and there is no pressure. If you're down near sea level, the, uh, the atmospheric pressure is around 14 PSI. Um, so those are kind of important things to remember, but what, what's going to happen here is we have all of this water vapor on the inside of this can. And that water vapor is floating around and there's a little bit higher pressure on the inside of the can than there is on the outside of the can. So this can is going to stay normal. Um, and you're going to see some of that water vapor pushing out. And what, what's going to happen is we're going to take this whole can and we're going to turn it upside down. And when we turn it upside down and we put it in this water, that water, because it's so cold, is going to take all of that, that hot air or that hot water vapor and it's going to condense it really, really quickly. And it's going to turn a bunch of that into, into water again instead of water vapor. Now when that turns into water, uh, goes from water vapor, which takes up a lot of volume or a lot of space in the inside of the can, and it turns into water, the actual water takes up way less space and it's going to do it really, really quickly around the outsides of this can. And so because it takes up so much less space, the pressure on the inside of this can is going to decrease. And when the pressure decreases, then we have high atmospheric pressure on the outside, about 12 psi, and we have much, much lower pressure on the inside. Um, and so because we have so much, uh, so, so little pressure on the inside compared to the outside, the atmosphere is going to crush the can from the outside in. So let's go ahead and try that. So I have this one already kind of boiling here. I'm going to bring you down a little bit closer and we're going to see if we can watch what happens when I put this into the water. And always remember this is definitely something that is going to, uh, you're going to want an adult nearby for. Don't burn yourself. Okay, so I have this warm can, and now I'm going to really quickly dump it top down into that water, and we'll watch what happens. So that can crushed itself, or more accurately, the atmospheric pressure, the difference between the atmospheric pressure on the outside of the can and on the inside of the can was really big. So there was a lot more pressure on the outside than there was on the inside because that hot um, water vapor that was the inside of here went into this cold water. And when it went into this cold water, 
all of that water vapor wanted to turn back into water and water doesn't take up nearly as much space as gas does or as that water vapor. And so when it condensed really, really quickly, the pressure inside this can dropped really, really low compared to the outside pressure or the pressure of the atmosphere that's sitting on top of it. And so because that happened, this whole can imploded. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you kind of a cool effect and that is the Leyden frost effect. And this is what happens when there's something that's super, super hot. And in fact, it's so hot that before water even comes into contact with it, it creates a vapor layer or some water vapor that cushions the, the water that's above it. So that water that's above it just sits on this cloud of water vapor and um, it acts a little bit more, it acts a little strange compared to normal water in like a pan that you would you'd be used to seeing. So you can do this at home as well. You just need to heat up a pan super, super hot with parental supervision. Um, this is not something to do on your own. Make sure that you don't burn yourself and be very careful. Um, but you can heat up a pan and you make sure that the pan is really, really hot. And then you can pour a little bit of water on it. Um, and if you pour the water on there and it immediately starts boiling, it's not hot enough. So it needs to get even hotter. Um, so I'm gonna use this little squirting thing. Um, but you can just use a cup or something like that and you just pour a little bit of water on there and then you can watch what happens. Um, so we're going to see this water kind of float on the surface of this pan and even uh, when I spin it around it'll just kind of keep spinning and going because there's very little surface friction because it's sitting on this cloud basically. Um, so, so it doesn't have anything that it's really rubbing up against except for air. So we'll see what happens here. So we've got that water there. And now it's, you see how it's kind of floating around on that pan? So it really likes to, it's sitting on its own cloud of water vapor. And that's why now it's just moving around really, really quickly. It's because um, it's not actually rubbing against the side of the pan. It's only sitting on top of this little cloud of water vapor. So if I put a little bit more in here, then we can get this whole thing kind of, oh. Get a big ring going in here of, of the Leyden frost effect where this water is sitting on a cloud of its own vapor. And eventually as this goes around, that water vapor is gonna soak up a little bit of energy from the pan and eventually um, the pan is gonna, gonna cool down just enough that it will actually start touching the water because it's no longer just immediately making water vapor. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty neat effect.